Hello, everybody. Welcome to Fruitful Trees. And I got a special uh, treat for you today. And this is a treat for me as well. Uh, my daughters go to a homeschool group. Uh, so I homeschool them, but once a week, they, I drop them off at this really old church here in the Boynton Beach, Florida. And we're really close to uh, the Zills, uh, the Walter Zill. His house is right around here. I actually might go and see him today and make a video there. Uh, but this whole area uh, is a really old historic area. And as you can see behind me, this is an empty lot, but there's a giant mango tree there. And I believe it's a Kent mango tree. Uh, so when I was at Walter's last time, he was explaining to me that the original farm they had or his dad had out here, it was mostly Kent mango trees. And then they transferred over to Kit. Back in the day, those were the two main mangoes. Uh, so you had the Starlocks up where Tropical Lake's farm is now, and they had the Duncan and the Edward up there. But the, the Zills at that time, from my understanding, it was the main popular ones were Kit and Kent. And then there's a whole bunch of others that they discovered on their farm. And Walter had written a book, a really great book about the history of these mangoes, about the Pickering mango and between him and his brother and his dad and the mangoes that they uh, discovered and how they got their names. And most of them are named after their family, the Zills and people uh, or people they knew where they found out. Uh, uh, from that mango. Uh, so in one direction, we're right near Zill's High Performance Nursery, which uh, Gary Zill's there, and he's the one that propagated and uh, planted all these seeds, mango seeds, and ended up coming up with a lot of the popular ones that are out now, the Pineapple Pleasure and the Lemon Zest and and, and, and a lot of these different uh, mango seedlings. I don't know, does that the Lemon Zest was a seedling actually from uh, the P PPK, uh, or the Po Pu Kalang, which is the uh, lemon meringue. But all of the other ones, the orange sherbet, the orange essence, and all of those uh, came from uh, his place. And then the other direction, we're at uh, Walter Zill's house, which is around here. And it's a much smaller farm. It's only like five acres. And I've been there before, and he has some really, really big trees. He has a giant one of, uh, I believe it's Pineapple Pleasure. Just really a beautiful place. So I'm going to try to get there later. But as I'm driving, this is a great example. This isn't one of their old properties, but it's the old area where they used to be in. And there's a bunch of empty lots uh, with trees like this. This is a giant mango tree. And that's, uh, like I said, a Kent. And there's three. There's three here, and I just passed another one. So I'm going to drive around in my car. I see one over there. This is really cool. Now, there's also a note right here on the fence. So I guess some people at some point wanted to get some of these mangoes. And there's a note here and a fence around this lot uh, telling people to keep out, don't come here. And so I guess uh, people are going to listen and will be obedient to that. I'm going to drive around and see how many trees I see in this little area and we'll check it out. Okay, so there's the empty yard, the lot with those big trees. And here, there's a, just a junk tree there, but that tree is a mango tree in between these two yards. And there's mangoes growing on there. There's actually two mango trees right next to each other, which is a pretty cool thing because people always ask how close you can plant mango trees. Those trees are fully grown mango trees, and they must be like a foot apart from each other. Not the first one, not that one, but those two right there. So you see that one just going straight up. That's a big mango tree. It's much older. But then that one... It's two, uh, it's one mango tree, but it's stopped at the end, and then it's just going that way. And there's mangoes on that tree. So yes, this whole side of the tree, you're not gonna get mangoes, but you can plant two next to each other and still get mangoes. So that's a great example of, I don't think anyone did that on purpose, just natural in nature. Then there's this big uh, giant uh, junk tree here. Actually, that looks like a moringa tree maybe. And, and it's still, you're able to plant them that close together. So that's pretty cool. So this is an old area. We're going to see the different uh, trees that are the way they did it in the old days. You see the big ones that are in the lot there. They're a little farther apart and really big. But this area has so many old trees. So let's go check them out. Okay, we're just on the opposite side of that same house. <laughs> that house, maybe it was a farm one day. But on this opposite side, there's uh, some more big trees. There's a big giant mango tree right there. And wow, just look, look at that one over there. So this whole area has just trees sporadically about that are like this. 
And it's a shame it's an empty yard and uh, they have all these signs warning people not to come on here. Uh, check that out, that big, uh, walk up to Florida. Look at that big, uh, you see those all the time here. Those are the igua iguanas. All right, let's see what else we've seen in the neighborhood. So I'm right around the corner from where we just were and there's a big giant mango tree right there. But this is what I really want to show everybody. Check this out. That's the lot I was just, the second lot I was just looking in. The first one was on the other side of that house. But look at this here. You have that small bush in the middle, but you have one, two, three, four, five, six giant trees right next to each other. It looks like they cut out a seventh one. And look at that. And they're, those, and I believe they're all Kent, Kent mango trees. And yeah, they might be 15, 20 feet apart. But this is just wild mango trees here in South Florida. Way too high. I would never let my uh, house mango tree get that tall. And this lot, unlike that lot across the street, this lot here is not fenced in. Actually, a sign here that says it's uh, for sale uh, from some realtor. And there is a sign there that says no trespassing, so technically I'm trespassing. But I just want to show you guys an idea of what they, what they have growing out here. These giant mango trees. And yeah, it's the beginning of mango season and there's mangoes on there. And this, so in the other lot of course, you got one and then here you got the, these five. Then you had some on the other side. Then across the street here you have one big one and there's another one and another one. So this was probably a big giant mango grove one day uh, in the past. But that's a big remnant of somebody's old mango grove. Now, I'm going to put a link below this video. I have my own mango trees, uh, but what I used to do before I, when I first moved down, I used to go to people that had coconuts uh, and knock on their doors and ask them if I could have their coconuts. I called it coconut hunting, but sometimes uh, there would be wild coconut trees, and I would often go and get coconuts. Not too often would I get mangoes, but I would get coconuts. But I'm going to put a link here below this video that I saw recently that actually... Uh, you can forage food because technically a food is uh, uh, outside the fence. No matter where the tree is, if the, the fruit is hanging over into the street or a public property. Now, I don't know about this. This is technically not public property. But if it was on the, in somebody's yard and hanging over in the street, uh, it's, it's, it's public property. So I'd still ask. I'd still ask before I took food from a tree like that. But, uh, but... It's very interesting that you can go ahead and take food like that. So uh, I'm going to put a link here where they show all over the world, especially in this country, what areas have food that you could get that's like that. But I just like to go the history of the trees and see how close they were planted and how far they're planted. And so I'd like to go look at these wild trees and even just even if they're not wild, even if they're trees in people's yards. So I use the site for that reason, just to see. So I'm going to go and show you some spots. I'll put this link below. I'm going to go look at some of those spots on the map and show you uh, how it is. It's really cool. So that website, I'm going to uh, tell you more about it. I'll, I'll put the link below. It's really cool. Like I said, some people might want to just do it for food, but I'm going to do it. I'm going to go on that site and look at these places and go look at uh, where it says the food's available and go check it out and maybe do some videos on just these trees and, and so on. But here I am. Coming up to, uh, on the, I'm on the same exact block that I've been filming here. And wow, wow, this is just connected to the other lot. And check this out. This is connected to that lot. And look how, look, those, those three trees. And over there were those four trees that I was showing you earlier, those five trees in a row. And here there's four trees in a row. I'm going to get out and do a little film here. So, so these are the things I think about. We can learn a lot from the way they did it in the old day. And here we are. These trees might be 80 years old or so. But we saw the trees over there, those five trees. So here's one, two, and three trees. I'd say they're about 15 to 20 feet apart. And these mangoes that there, 
They're fully grown. Nobody's taking care of them. That's another interesting thing. Nobody's taking care of them and they're fully grown. Mangles are in them. They're doing their thing. Mangles grow like weeds here in South Florida. Uh, but you can see they're intertwined with each other, but that's not still not stopping them from growing. So now there's a junk tree. That wasn't a mango tree. I don't know what kind of tree that was. And yeah, that same lot is here. So this whole block was probably a big mango orchard one day. I'm gonna go down the block and see what else. All I right, find. on that same block that I was just at, uh, there was a, a apartment development, a brand new one. So it looked like they got rid of a lot of the trees there. But here I am, right across the street or the main the main street in this other area, and there's a I'm in front of an abandoned house. And look, there's more trees in a row. There's one, two, three, four. And it all looks like they were spaced the exact same part apart. Uh, so this, from here all the way to there, must have been one big giant mango grove. Uh, but these are four trees. These trees must be 50 to 60 years old at least. And they're just... They're tremendous. And uh, so... You know, we're gonna go ahead and uh, continue to drive around and see what else we see here. But uh, it's sad that, you know, people build houses and knock down old trees and stuff, but it's also a lesson to learn, you know? We gotta plan things accordingly so in the future, we don't have to get rid of trees, right? Uh, but these trees are really old. I could only imagine before this street was here and all these other houses were here, how it was, but there's certainly a lot of trees in this area, so this is really cool. Uh, and I see a mango tree right across the street there. So before they built this street, it probably went straight through here. Uh, let's continue to look around. Wow, I didn't have to drive too far. I'm on the opposite side of this abandoned house here. And there's more trees. There's one, two, three, four big giant mango trees right here. So somebody that's gonna get this house is gonna have be surrounded by six or seven giant mango trees. And I'd absolutely cut them back and top work them to different varieties and get them healthy. Uh, so if you're a fruit lover and investing, this might be a great deal for you because these mango trees, you could graft some really nice things onto them. It'd be a lot of work, but it could happen. But uh, let's give you an example. This is the way they did it in the old days. And, and some of the mangoes here are even falling on the ground. Let's take a look. So here are these trees. And look right here. They're not ripe yet, but this this looks more like a Duncan mango than a Kent mango. But there's one, two, three, three mangoes here. Three mango trees, giant trees. Now nobody's gonna let their tree grow to this size these days. But if you did, look how close they planted and they're getting away with it. So these look more like Edwards or Duncan's maybe. I think Duncan's more this color. But yeah. Or well, they might just be wild mangoes, but they're all over the floor. They might just be wild mangoes. And coming to back here, here's some more. And then you see there's some uh, apartment developments over there, so they probably knocked out some of these trees. Wow, so big. Look how thick these trunks are. Well, actually, uh, go check these out. I'll, I'll taste these when I get home. Okay, there's just so many trees in this neighborhood. So there's the last one I'll show you. That is a, a big tree right there in the middle. It's right around the corner from where I just was. There's actually one, two, two big trees there and a small one over there. I'm sure they're loaded with mangoes also. And apparently they're not just Kent because it looks like the ones I just pulled were either Edwards or Duncan's, they look like. So these were two of the ones that I, I picked that were on the floor. So these definitely are in kits, and it's not the season for kit now because that's a late season, and a kent is a late season. So these are early, 
So uh, I know Duncan's midseason. So these might be Edwards, but they're not colorful like Edwards. But then again, they could be just wild from a seed. But I doubt that because they're too in form of just trees in a row for for it to be wild. But we'll see. I'll taste them. And uh, if anything else I see out of the ordinary, you know, but there's just a whole bunch of trees around here. It's a great area.